Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you guys doing? This is an annihilatory response video to a man called Rizvan, who is an apostate from Islam and who has made it his life's mission, or at least on, on the internet, to try and refute Islam and Muslims. Now, this is a despicable character, a cantankerous individual with no training and no qualifications in this. <laughs> uh, peace of Christ to all of you. This is the way the Muslims always they try to refute you by putting you down, calling you names. And look who is talking. This person, he have no training. Um, what is the training you have? You don't even have high school from Islamic school. I mean, look who is talking. The guy who says that his God does not have a part. While all of us, we knew there is tons of videos in YouTube saying that Allah has hands, has feet, has legs, uh, etc. So, and not only that, when David would ask him, uh, Allah has parts, <clears throat> uh, he says, who says so? <laughs> and he was laughing, which means he was making fun of his own prophet. This is what we are talking about. A person who always try to make a comedy in order to avoid answering or refuting something extremely clear by lying, saying he do not know, he never heard, he never he saw. that there is nothing like him, right? And that nothing is comparable to him. Yeah, I'm going to play for your videos where the Muslim scholar explaining We're to Carvana. us how Allah looked like. And this guy, he says, nobody believe in this. Who says so? When David would he ask him that question? So yourself, you are not trustworthy to talk about a training or to talk about expertise. You are a liar. And say, oh yeah, Allah Azza wa grant us the ability to see your face in paradise. Or when someone prays you and says, may Allah Azza wa allow you to see Allah's face in paradise. Wouldn't this be giving Allah Azza wa Jal attributes of humans? And the answer is no. Allah mentioned Azza wa Jal in his book describing himself a number of attributes that we believe in. So Allah Azza wa Jal tells us in Surah Al-Rahman, وَيَبَقَى وَجْهُ رَبِّكَ Allah Azza wa Jal. And this is what I call myself and all of my brothers and sisters. Recite the Quran. Get your best knowledge from the Quran. Don't devote five minutes a day, ten minutes a day to the Quran. No, devote more, an hour, an hour and a half, yeah, yeah, to recite the Quran and to learn what it says at the same time. Now, in the Quran, Surah Al-Rahman, Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَيَبْقَى وَجْهُ رَبِّكَ ذُو الْجَلَالِ وَالْإِكْرَامِ Everything will be perished except Allah Azza wa Jal. And here Allah Azza wa Jal is referring to himself by saying that his face will remain, which means Allah Azza wa Jal uh, uh, subhanahu wa ta'ala will not perish. He is the first without a beginning and he is the last without an ending. Azza wa Jal. He's the creator of the all, uh, uh, what you see and what you do. Yeah, yeah. This is why he do not know what how he created, you know. Like one verse he says something, the other verse he says the opposite, but he's the creator. But this is a refutation for this liar, Muhammad Hijab, who says that Allah has no physical part. And he made fun of David Wood saying, who says so? Well, the one who says so is your prophet. And shame on you to make fun of your prophet. We make fun of him because he is funny and he is stupid. But you make fun of him, why? You follow him. Shame on you. Listen carefully. Do not see. And he's not created. And he does not die. And he does not have an ending. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah described in the Quran that he has a face. Allah described in the Quran that he has two hands. When he addressed Iblis, Satan. And he told him, what prevented you from prostrating to what I have created with my two hands? So this is what Allah described himself. Allah says in Surah Al-Qalam that on the day of judgment, Allah Azza wa Jal would uplift and show his leg. And <laughs> but this guy, he said, Allah don't have a leg, Allah don't have parts. And he was making fun of David Wood. Unbelievable, brother. Allah Ta'ala has a foot. Does he not? 
Is there any proof for that? Hmm? Which is? Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Prophet Lut. Prophet Lut. So where is the proof that Allah Ta'ala has a foot? Mtiyaz? When I go again, Nazri? Muhammad Hijab will answer you. We know that paradise and hellfire fell into an argument. Paradise or hellfire said first that I have been privileged. I only received the arrogant and the tyrant. It's showing enough. It's showing off. This is hellfire. It's been privileged that it only receives the arrogant and the tyrant. Well, paradise said, what is the matter with me? Why do I only receive the weak and the humble? Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to paradise, you are my mercy, which I bestow on whoever I please amongst my creation. And he said to hellfire, you are my means of punishment, whom I punish anyone from amongst my creation, and both of you will be fueled. So you're creating new creation for paradise, but hellfire will need more and more and more. It will say, as the Quran mentions to the Qaf, verse 30, Today we say to hellfire, are you full? It says no. Is there more? Here you notice. Is there any? You notice the story. Is there any proof of the one who come with this story, which is supposedly Muhammad, claiming that heaven and uh, hellfire, they are person, and they speak, and he talk to them. And not only that, actually, Muhammad he explained that the heat we see in the sun and the, the in the summer, it's coming from uh, from the hellfire, and the cold we have in the winter is coming from. Uh, uh, the, the the heaven and this is how Muhammad always with his fictions explain things happening around us But anyway to make the video short here this guy explaining to Muslims that Allah he has a foot and obviously his foot is sexy and you know it Nice, but hellfire will need more and more and more It will say as the Quran mentions to the Qaf verse 30 <laughs> Today we say to hellfire, are you full? It says no. Is there more? I want more. Then Allah Ta'ala places his foot in hellfire. His beautiful, magnificent, excellent. Thank you for fixing it. I thought you would say his foot only. You should say magnificent, sexy, beautiful. Come on. <clears throat> so going back to the topic, Muhammad Hijab is a big fat liar. He think by denying things is in Islam and those are Muslim Sunni like him. And they are not from a sect which you don't agree with. So he played a game that I never heard, I do not know, and I will make fun of you. And this is exactly now what he's doing. He's calling the guy names. But you will see how they are trying to refute him in a very funny, stupid way. Actually, those who Muhammad Hijab, he chose them, they have a team. This video is made by a team, a team of bunch of Abdul trying to refute things. Now, if you go and see how they refute, he will die laughing. Let us hear more. Subject matter that he attempts to engage in. Moreover, as we're going to see with this clip, this man has real problems with Muslims, not just Islam. He, in this video, as you're going to see, was speaking about sacrifices in Hajj. And he tries to mute this after it's come up on the internet, probably because he's afraid that that such video is going to be taken down. No, 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 no. Nobody is afraid. <clears throat> Maybe uh, you must have because you, you, you flag the videos and everybody knows that. <clears throat> but it's true that you Muslims, you sacrifice a big, a huge death. There's one incident, thousands of people killed by people stepping at the top of each other. And the only one we can blame is Allah. Because if Allah is the one who asked you to go there, don't Allah on you that this little tiny town doesn't fit for the Muslims who will walk in the top of each other? Not to forget to mention that your God Allah is very weird God. You see, remember everybody, the Muslims, they say and they claim that Allah is the one who choose the location of the Kaaba. Uh, <clears throat> so if Allah, he choose 
the location, then the location should be the best place in the whole earth. But what happened, Mecca and the Kaaba specifically, is located in the worst place in the earth. Actually, if you search right now, even after the American help and the technology and they build dams and the monies, you will see all those of flooding happening in Mecca. But the most, the most hilarious one is the one where the Kaaba is flooded by the sewage. By the sewage. If we go and see the images of the Kaaba, this is the Kaaba, my friend. This is the Kaaba, and people are swimming inside the Kaaba. And right away, you see in uh, in uh, in Mecca, for those who do not know, uh, Saudi Arabia does not have sewage. So when there is uh, little rain, all the rain go and take the poop and the dirt and the and the piss of a human being with it because all the, the 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 dirt is in a hole in the inside the house in the, in the yard of the house so when little rain come all of this will go to the kaaba now don't allah knew that this is a low location this is the lowest location in mecca and he should not put it there if allah is the one who chose the location of the kaaba how he chose the worst location remember this is a location chosen by god so god is an idiot so here we see that when Muslims they try to say something, they not only they prove themselves wrong, they shoot themselves in the foot. But nothing new. This is what Islam is about. Now I don't want to waste your time. This video actually, I'm going to choose some of the topics one by one because this this video is like eight hours, six hours. So I cannot. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm not going to make a video of six hours one shot. It's hard for people to watch, but. We will go one by one. Here you have a list of things he, uh, uh, Muhammad Hijab and his team, supposedly, uh, they, uh, they want to answer uh, this guy. Uh, so one of them, it says, the sun set in a muddy spring. Assalamu alaikum, my fellow flat earthers. Today we're going to be going through one of the most... In fact, Islam teach that the earth is a flat and we can prove it easy. But we will go back to it later. And this is why Muhammad, he, he asked the Muslims to pray in the direction of the Kaaba from wherever they are. And this is why even the Quran says that the earth, we made it flat in many verses. But this is not a topic for now. Flat earths. See, supposedly, this is how they answer. They make fun of the thing to make it sound like we don't believe in this. But the fact they do. Problematic, shocking. <laughs> And faith shaking verses in the Quran. Well, to Ridvan at least. Ridvan says that when he read the Quran the first time, this was one of the verses that stood out to him and it played a role in him leaving Islam. As you can see in the title of the video, this verse is the one that speaks of the sun setting into a murky spring. I'm sure that I've read this verse over a hundred times and I've never really been affected in the same way that Ridvan has been. Surely, that's because I'm not as smart as he is. Absolutely. Oh, I'm going to enjoy this one. Let's get to the video. Until when he reached the setting of the sun, he found it setting in a spring of dark mud, and he found near it a people. The sun goes there for a bath after the day, I guess. Many Muslim apologists of our time try to argue that the Quran first is misunderstood or was just mistranslated. That's absolutely not true, but stay with me and see how they do that. The first way of making the Quran not look too embarrassing is to corrupt it and to make it correct again. If you search on Google for this Quran first, you will likely land on Quran.com, which features the Sahih International translation of this verse. In that translation, you will see that they added something that doesn't exist. The verse suddenly says that he found it as if it was setting in a muddy spring. See how they lie to you? Ridwan is correct in saying that this is an addition to the text. However, it is not a corruption. Ridwan seems to not be aware that the inclusion of brackets is an indication that the word as if were not in the original text. Thank you very much. So as long it is not in the original text, that's mean Allah, he do not need to add as if. So are you Muslims correcting Allah? Are you saying that Allah, he do not make it clear and we Muslims, we have to add as if to make it clear or we are adding as if 
to lie at you. You see, the Quran says that the one who changed a letter from its location, he is doing corruption. What about those who they are adding letters and words? So the purpose of as if is just to make Quran look better. If Allah never say as if, and obviously that's mean it, it, he do not need to add as if. So why you add it? Maybe you are smarter than Allah. Hmm, I think so. Had this been an intentional corruption of the text, the brackets would not have been included in the first place. To be honest, there is many verses in the Quran. There is no bracket at all, and they add the words. Even translation for the hadith. Give me a break. Now let's continue. So, what is your answer for this guy? You see, I was looking for the answer in those videos, and I find that they are nothing but blah 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 blah. Not only that, this guy is going to give us a hand to prove Muhammad to be a false prophet. Listen carefully. Honest, this has nothing to do with the video. I'm just going out of my way to show that Ridwan doesn't seem to have any idea of the basics. Mm. Here we come to number two of those apologetics. Many say that the translation is simply not clear and that you need to read it in a context, that the word used for finding it actually describes the situation only from Dhulkarnain's perspective, not as a general truth. So when the Quran first here says he found it setting in a muddy spring, it means that he saw it that way, not that the sun actually sets in a muddy spring. First off, as a lover of linguistics, I have to say that that's absolute garbage. But Advan actually loves garbage, since he's a waste man. But let's see what he has to say about the linguistics. But in order to refute such apologetics, I can do three things. Look at other translations. That won't be necessary. We are in agreement that the words as if do not exist in the text. Compare the words to other verses. Good, we could do that. And use common sense. Oh boy, um, well, there are so many witty retorts that I could make, but it's so easy that it feels like cheating. If you want to look at the word, the word used here for finding is wajadaha, which means he found it. Wajada means he found. Now, we don't even have to go far. The same word is used again in the same verse when it says he found near it a people. He found here is Wajada. It's the exact same word. So is this as if now? He didn't really find those people. It was only as if he found those people. Well, Ridvan, you failed to realize the term Wajada isn't always used to refer to a physical reality. If you go nine verses back, this will become quite clear. Notice this verse speaking of Musa السلام, and his companion finding a wall that was about to collapse. The Arabic states, Now, the literal Ridvanian translation would be, They found a wall that wanted to collapse. In other words, the wall literally wanted to kill itself. Hey, hold on, hold on. I mean, look how silly and how stupid what he just said. You just gave us a hand, actually, by your ignorance. You just admitted that they found a wall. This is what the word for wajada. What he found, jidaran. So the found or the find is about the wall. You just gave him a hand. He is not talking about he found the wall when a jump. Who care about a jump? This is your, the funny Islamic interpret uh, Quran words, which is funny and stupid, because as you said, it doesn't make sense to say that he found a wall. He want to fail down as if the is of the wall making the decision to fail down and not only that uh, this is smart muslim he make a cartoon making fun of his god words listen carefully and love yes the wall had struggled for so long struggled with paying the bills years of not receiving the respect it deserves finally it had come to a conclusion <laughs> Is making fun of the Quran because the Quran is the one saying he found a wall. So the find is finding a wall. Then the description about what this wall wanna do, and the Quran saying the wall wanna jump and will destroy itself. And you are making fun of it. Thank you very much. How in the world you say he found a wall which is going to destroy itself or jump and fail down? Have you ever heard of this statement before? But this is one of the proofs of the funny, stupid Arabic which Muhammad he used in his Quran. And this is why the Arab they used to say to Muhammad, This is nothing but the fairy tales of the.
people before us and Muhammad he confirmed that always here we go this is the Quran <coughs> This is what the Arab they always say to Muhammad. This is nothing but a bunch of fairy tales, and you make us laugh at you. And as you see, uh, uh, and, and, and Muslims they say to you, Do you know that the Arab they were amazed by the Quran? The Arab were amused by the Quran. This is why they said to Muhammad, Well, if you want, we can make better than this, but this is a stupid. And this is a chapter 8, verse number 31. When our verses recite it to them they say we you know like if we wish we can see like this but this is nothing but the fairy tales of the ancient and muhammad here describing a fairy tale of the ancient about a guy his name is al-khadr who drank from the fountain of youth and because he drank from the fountain of youth he never died so he was in the funeral of adam he was in the funeral of noah he was the funeral of of, of uh, musa he was the funeral of muhammad <laughs> And if we go in the hadith, even if this is not our topic, but you force me to laugh at the, at the, at, the, at this cult. Uh, there is a hadith speaking about uh, uh, the fountain of youth, youth. The same one we see in the parrot of the Caribbean. Let us see if we can find it fast. Uh, <clears throat> The story about Al Khadr. <clears throat> Here we go. <laughs> Are you going to say to him, This is a weak hadith? This is Sahih al Bukhari. Because we know the game. Anything will look embarrassing right away. This is not accepted hadith. This is not right. And this is not corrected chain. I mean, all the disease and defect will appear in a moment. Here we go. This is your hadith, and it says that this guy he keep walking until he found the water is called the the water of al hayat, which means the water of life, and this is where the fish or the whale of Musa's get some water from it, and because it was dead, when the water touched it, the the fish became alive. <laughs> Now, are you going to add there as if, as if, as if it is water of life? Isn't it obvious here that Muhammad is a liar? Who believed that there's a fountain of life? You drink from it, you come back to life. And the guy who his name Al-Khadr, he was called this way because when he sit in the grass, even if the grass is dead, his ass will make the grass alive, green. This is why they call him Al-Khadr, which means Mr. Green. And this is Sahih al-Bukhari in the front of you. Now let us continue with the comedy of this Abdul who uh, Muhammad Hijab recommended him to uh, refute uh, because this is his teacher. This is the teacher of Muhammad Hijab. <laughs> and as you see, he is making fun of Allah. That's Allah saying that the wall will collapse. Exactly. It is funny and stupid. And I, I, I admire your cartoon. Very nice. Sound. Now, we don't even have to go far. The same word is used again in the same verse. When it says, he found near it a people. He found here is Wajada. It's the exact same word. So is this as if now? He didn't really find those people. It was only as if he found those people. Well, Ridvan, you failed to realize the term Wajada isn't always used to refer to a physical reality. If you go nine verses back, this will become quite clear. Notice this verse speaking of Musa السلام, and his companion finding a wall that was about to collapse. Did he just <coughs> did he just say it? finding a wall? I mean, I cannot believe it. The stupidity of those people. Did you did you hear it? He just said fi he, he, finding a wall. And why you jump to different verse? However, even in this verse, it says finding a wall who want to collapse. So. The finding a wall who want to collapse. This is a proof that the Quran is a stupid book and the Arabic is not right. So he's trying to make fun of the guy, and then he by doing that he made fun of Quran because the guy he said to you in the same verse we are talking about, which is speaking about the sunset in the murky water. Hmm? They found he Zulkarnain, he found near it. This is the same word he found near it. 
the same as he found the sun setting so he found physically so don't say as if so he was saying to you is it as if here as he found people near it or he found people near it so what do you do you make comedy just for the sake of trying to refute the guy making comedy making fun of the quran and your god book saying look the quran says that he found the wall who wanted to destroy himself and the wall want to kill himself uh, show me how we want to kill himself the arabic states now the literal Ridvanian translation would be they found a wall that wanted to collapse in other words the wall literally wanted to kill itself yes the wall had struggled for so long mm -hmm. struggled with paying the bills years of not receiving the respect it deserves finally finally hold on hold on hold on hold on you know what you remind me of something struggling not paying the bills is that why muhammad he did the same exactly like this wall he went to the top of the mountain and he was trying to commit suicide is that true are you going to say to me as if or this is as it is in sahih al-bukhari which muslims cannot deny we find that muhammad he tried to do the following. There was a guy, his name is Waraq ibn Nufal, and I believe strongly that this is his real father who was sleeping with Muhammad's mother. Oh, I can't prove it easy. And actually, if you have my books, you can see that. So this guy was translating from the Christian gospel into Arabic, and this is the Quran, as you see. This is Muslim books, and this is this is the wife of the Prophet saying that, not me. So Waraq, he was a cousin of Khadija, and he became supposedly Nasara, not a Christian, Nasara. It's a, it's, a, it's a kind of a Christian cult like Jehovah's Witnesses. So he became a Nasara and he used to write the Arabic writing and used to write of the gospel in Arabic. That is the Quran, my friend. And then when Muhammad, when Waraka he died, uh, the inspiration of Allah stopped. Why the inspiration of Allah will stop? What, what does this have to do with God? A man, his name is Waraka. Who is Waraka? No one. Suddenly, when Waraka he died, but after a few days, here the story says, Waraka died and the divine inspiration was also paused for a while. And the prophet <clears throat> became so sad and he uh, heard that, uh, uh, we heard that he have intended several times to throw himself from the tops of the high mountains. And this is Aisha reporting what she heard from people before her. And this is all the story goes back to Khadija too. So this is all by the family of the prophet reporting this the, the story the prophet trying many times this is several times and each time he tried to throw himself like this wall hmm? like this wall i wish he can change the cartoon make it like about muhammad so we put muhammad there and then he make fun with his uh, funny way of saying <laughs> look like razwan he think the wall want to kill himself like our prophet who tried to commit suicide many times. <laughs> Companion finding a wall that was about to collapse. Uh -huh. The Arabic states, <laughs> Now the literal Ridvanian translation literal. would be, they found a wall that wanted to collapse. Mm -hmm. In other words, the wall literally wanted to kill itself. Yes. The wall. The wall. Muhammad. Struggled for so long. <coughs> struggled for much. Struggled with paying the bills. He did not pay the bills, Muhammad. Years of not receiving, he is not receiving the respect Quran. it deserves. Muhammad not receiving Quran. Finally. Finally. It had come to a conclusion. To throw himself. That there was only one way out. That's it. Throw Don't yourself. do it, wall. Don't do it, we Muhammad. We love you. Don't do it, Muhammad. We love you. But alas. Muhammad, he decided to do it. It was too late. Too late. Well, at least this is how Ridvan <laughs> probably understood the verse when he first read it. Now, the reason why Ridvan does not hold this understanding is because he knows that 7th century Arabs couldn't have been that stupid. However, Ridvan... Ah, so 7th century is Arab, they cannot be that stupid. He just admitted that the one who wrote the Quran is a 7th century Arab, not Allah. Did you hear it? This is the story is written by the 7th century Arab. That is very, very clear word from this guy. He just admitted. 
Now listen to this. Look what he will say. I could not help but project a primitive view onto the Arabs when it came to astronomy, and this projection is not justified, as we shall soon see why. Why? Keep in mind, if a man said, Allah, it wouldn't mean that he literally saw Allah. And, you know, you see that stupid game. I found Allah, I found my... You see, there's a huge difference between I found something physical and I found something spiritual. So stop being this game. Shame on you. The verse is speaking about he found something physical. Not he found uh, love. He found uh, uh, <coughs> mercy. He found what why, why they mix things together you see how did you see how they have no dignity no no self-respect the verse is speaking about finding a place until he reach a place it is about timing and about a place what does have to do I found Allah and by the way I did not find Allah did you where is Allah <laughs> oh, if a man said wajit to qalbi it wouldn't mean that he found his heart, See? but rather that he found a female partner that he does not loved. Mean, yeah, does not mean that. Now, let me offer something else. <laughs> if this same sun sinking in a muddy spring narrative was found in another Islamic source, would that just be a coincidence? Narrated by Abu Dhar, I was sitting behind the messenger of Allah, who was riding a donkey while the sun was setting. He asked, do you know where this sets? I replied, Allah and his apostle know best. He said, it sets in a spring of warm water. An advanced hadith is a shortened form. The full version can be found in Musad al-Bazzar. The report says that the sun goes into a muddy spring and then prostrates under the throne of Allah. Soon, I'll explain why the first part of the hadith, which speaks of a muddy spring, is a false attribution to the Prophet, peace be It's a false. It's a false. It's a false. That's it. This, this, you know, this hadith was approved, and actually, until now, it is approved. But in YouTube, by His Majesty, the, the, this guy is supposedly the teacher of Muhammad Hijab, and this is what make it more funny. Muhammad Hijab in the beginning of the video speaking about somebody have a good training, and so those are supposedly who have good training. <laughs> And the hadith, brother, it, brother, it's a term. The hadith is absolutely, absolutely false. Like, what do you mean it's absolutely false? Where are you, where are you get this from? Can you show us reference where it says this hadith is rejected? Who reject this hadith? Nobody. Nobody reject this hadith. They lie, my friend. They have no dignity. Continue. Be upon him. This hadith can indeed be traced back to Muhammad because the transmission between the people who reported this hadith has been authenticated. This is actually the definition of sahih or authentic in hadith terminology. But, but, because the Quran verse is an example of how you sound when you learn basic science from 7th century Arabs, Muslim scholars don't want to take this hadith at face value and therefore only call it sahih in transmission, in chain. Some add explanations like, uh, well, someone in the transmission was not a reliable person. Sorry, no. You are going to give a lesson in Hadith Sciences, Ya Okay, no, let me you show you how this. this is done. <laughs> the Prophet, peace be upon him, narrated the Hadith to Abu Dhar. Abu Dhar narrated it to Yazid bin Sharik. Yazid narrated it to Ibrahim. Now pay attention. Al-A'mash, Yunus, Harun bin Sa'ad, Musa bin Musayyab, and Abdul A'la Taymi all narrated the same hadith without mentioning anything about the sun going into a spring. On the other hand, the hadith in Sunan Abi Dawood that Radvan is quoting is the hadith of Sufyan bin Hussein from Al-Hakam bin Utaybah from Ibrahim. Mm. This is the one that speaks of the sun setting in the murky spring. Mm. Al-Hakam is outnumbered five to one, and therefore this wording is rejected as an addition. It should be noted that I do not personally believe that this is a mis- well, Hold on, hold on, hold on. Outnumbered one to five. So if it's outnumbered one to five, why it says that this is in many, many writers of the hadith that this is a sahih or isnad, and this is sahih, and by the way, for those who do not know, that this hadith, the one we are talking about, 
it is in a total agreement with the Quran so how the one which is in total agreement with the Quran is rejected and the one which is not giving details is the one more accepted however even the one this guy now he accept is going to be enough for us to prove that Muhammad is a false prophet listen carefully what he will say next attribution to Ibrahim from al Hakam. Rather, it's more likely that this is from his student Sufyan, who has been criticized by some scholars of hadith. Also, none of the students of Al Hakam narrated this hadith from him except Sufyan, which makes it likelier that this is a mistake from Sufyan. Now, Ridwan may insist as much as he likes that the addition of Sufyan is acceptable. But seriously, who cares what Ridwan thinks? But what about you show us the proof that this is not acceptable? You give us a speech in the hadith in the front of us on the screen it says that this is a sahih chain which means nobody rejected nobody says that you see if the hadith have a problem and this is your Islamic website then the Islamic website will say this hadith uh, have a problem and we don't uh, accept it at all but none of your scholars say so so when when a Muslim he tried to say something obviously he is uh, trying to manipulate it and make it look different this is the hadith And look what the Muslim they say about it do you see any comment here they are saying this is rejected this is not accepted no it is the opposite everything there is correct and those who they are there nobody can speak against them they are very well trust well-known Muslim uh, 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 we can take hadith from them and he himself he reported that the person who reported the hadith have many students so he is a Muslim scholar why he will lie why he will lie so if you are trying to refute this person who his name was one I think you are not trying to do that you are trying to refute Allah who says the Sun set in murky water and trying to refute Muhammad because this is very embarrassing and this is the only way to get away from it to say I don't accept this hadith this is the game they play. And by the way, when the Muslim they say we have many hadith are not correct, that means Islam is not valid and cannot be trustworthy. Because who is the one who decides what is correct, what is not? A guy who came six hundred years, or a guy who came two thousand years, or maybe after five years from now they will say all the hadith is gone, all the hadith is corrupt. We don't accept it. And this is the only way to deny the stupidity of Muhammad and his teaching. But look what happened here. This guy. He will give us a hand, big hand. Additional to all what he did already, making fun of the Quran about the wall collapsing and other things he said, look what he will say now, which will make it very embarrassing for Islam and Muslims. Listen carefully, and I'm glad that they made this video. Let's assume for a moment that Ridwan's addition is correct. That would mean that the sun, at the end of a long day, soaks into a muddy spring now, please ignore the fact that our artist placed the murky spring in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. Um, anyways, while the sun is bathing, it finds the throne of God under the water and then starts to um, prostrate towards it. Now, the issue with this ridiculous understanding is that the throne of Allah is not underwater, but it is above the heavens. Here we go. We got you busted again. This is why you must you know, debate people who don't speak Arabic and you run away from me like Muhammad Hijab. The throne of Allah is not in the heaven. The throne of Allah, according to Muhammad, is under the water. Sorry, is above the water, not under the water, as you said. Are you going to say you're a prophet is an idiot now? This is Sahih Muslim, this is Sahih Al Bukhari. All of them, they say the same. Here we go. Read with me carefully. And his throne is above the water. His throne is above the water. All right. So you see how they lie? What you will say now, Sahih al-Bukhari is wrong. Rizwan, Sahih al-Bukhari is full of errors and mistakes so you were making fun of the sun taking a bath what those people don't understand that according to the according to muhammad there is water under the throne of allah 
and this is why the the, the sun goes every day under the throne of Allah which is in the water because above the water <laughs> there is a throne and now he is making for us a funny cartoon which is really I like because this is exposed to us how Muhammad imagined things happening you see I'm very thankful for your cartoon your cartoon is very nice very beautiful brother I encourage you to do make more more cartoon we need cartoon brother your cartoon is the best look at the sun look at this long day soaks into a muddy spring now please ignore the fact that our artist placed the murky spring in the middle of the Pacific Ocean um, anyways while the Sun is bathing it finds the throne of God under the water and then starts to um, see here the ignorant I suppose those are the one to answer we're in we're in Islamic teaching is saying this this the, the throne of Allah is under the water it says the opposite it's above the water and he lie he says it is in up in heaven now maybe he will say well Muhammad obviously is a liar when he said that uh, Allah throne is above the water and as you see this is in many hadith not in one location you see all those stories all those hadith reporting the same thing that Allah throne is above the water what Muslims don't want to understand that Muhammad is a superstition person he's mentally ill he, he copy anything around him and he make it a story as if it is he learned from God as an example the Sun not only sit inside the water the sun sit between the two horn of shaitan which is in a spring of muddy water not this is not the ocean you see the muslims when they try to refute this they say to you oh this is how Qarnain he saw it as it appears sitting in a, in, in the ocean do you see the word ocean here it's a spring and when we say spring it is a small thing it's not a huge it's not an ocean it's a spring which means if the water is a fresh but this water is hot and boiling and this is where shaitan he hide under the throne of Allah in that water and the Sun every day is goes and jump in it and actually we can find you some hadith right now hold on as when we are talking about it why we don't uh, find the hadith and show everybody uh, what Muhammad said <laughs> the sun set between the two horn of shaitan and the sun right and the sun rise between the sun the, the two horn of shaitan read it oh they will say to you this is the if huh. see here they say the if the if brother this is the if in the standard today but uh, no problem we can show you something which they can agree it is not the if but as you see here it is rising and sitting between the two horn of shaitan. This is a proof that Muhammad is a liar. Who, who would have believed in that? And let us find you a different hadith. <clears throat> this is another one. Sunan al Nisa'i. And this is Sunan Abi Dawood. And this is the hadith number. And here it says, Hukmuhu Sahih Duna Jumlat. Jawful Layl. So everything in this hadith is, and that, I don't know why in English they did not say it is Sahih, but it says in Arabic here Sahih, except the sentence where it says in the middle of the night. So everything in this hadith is accurate except the middle of the night. So here it says the same about the shaitan, the, 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 the sun sit, and it's set between the two horns of the devil, as you see. Do you see it? So shaitan he jump in a muddy hot spring of water not ocean and the Sun set between his two horn and Allah is above the water and the Sun is prostrating for Allah but there is something more important to come in the video of this uh, uh, teacher of uh, because supposedly uh, Muhammad hijab he says those are his teachers so uh, let us see what he will say more to expose Islam prostrate towards it now the issue with this ridiculous understanding is that the throne of Allah is not underwater but it is above the heavens we got you busted in this more one. importantly the throne is larger than the heavens and earth so hold on. to conclude the hold, on, hold on hold on hold on hold on no it doesn't say that you are a big fat liar the throne of Allah is not larger than the earth and the heaven it is which mean in equal size of the earth and the heaven 
why you lie and how that can be unless the earth and the heaven are flat in the top of each other this is the Quran let us go there it's amazingly how they lie Here we go. His kursi, the word kursi is not an Arabic word. Muhammad claimed that the Quran is an Arabic Quran, but he used the word kursi, which is a foreign word. His kursi extends over the heaven and the earth. And this is the Muslim translation. In Arabic, it says, Wis'u, which means is the same distance as the heaven and the earth. This is how wide it is. And in order to accomplish such a mission, you have to have a flat earth, which is the same size of the heaven in the top of it. And this is what it's meant. This is why in Ibn Kathir he says, this is the earth is not like those who they are, the astronomers today, they say, and Ibn Kathir, we're talking about uh, uh, 800 years after Muhammad, uh, he is still saying that it's a it's a lie of those those who say the earth is not a flat they are liars and the funny this guy he says to us that uh, hello flat earthers <laughs> you it's you muslims who believe in a flat earth so the heaven and the earth are in the same size and they are in total match with the chair of allah which is carried by eight mounting goats which supposedly are angels Chapter 69 verse number 17 and that make it clear that this is all is physical because when you say that there is the 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 the, uh, the throne is carried by eight angels each one of them have different face and even the story says that when the angels they tried to carry the throne of Allah they could not so Allah gave him the heck he gave them a hand because the throne of Allah is so big and so heavy and Allah is heavy too <laughs> So is that a physical throne? Yes. Is the distance of Allah throne is physical? Yes. Is Allah himself is physical? Yes. We showed you the video about Allah have hands, Allah have foot, Allah have legs, etc. Now let us continue with the comedy of this guy. Addition in this hadith strongly contradicts established aspects of Islamic ideology. Which but one? carry on Ridvan, please. Now, if we accept it for a second that the Hadith was indeed wrong, which makes it a bombastic coincidence that such a Quran first and such a Hadith both exist. Actually, it wouldn't be a coincidence. The addition in the Hadith is due to the narrator's misunderstanding of the Quranic verse and then... Ah, look, look at this, guys. He just confirmed that the Hadith about the sun sit in the murky water is correct because he said that the narrator... They did that based in misunderstanding. Hold on. How this is, can be misunderstanding? A second ago, you said, the one who reported this hadith uh, is one, and he was out number one to five. And now he is saying that the hadith about the sun uh, uh, sitting in murky water is a misunderstanding of the narrator. Why the narrator have a misunderstanding when he's saying the prophet said so? How that can be a misunderstanding? And this is why I say when those kids, they try to explain something, they make it horrible. They do poo-poo. This is why this Muhammad Hijab, he ran away from debating me. All of them, they are a bunch of kids. What misunderstanding? It says the messenger said. So you are saying now the messenger have misunderstanding. But he claimed that it was the narrator have misunderstanding. What it says here, I was sitting behind the messenger of Allah, S A W S F M shortwave, uh, who was riding a donkey while the sun was setting. He asked, Do you know where this is set? I replied, Allah and his apostle knows best, which means the Muslims associate the knowledge of Allah with the knowledge of a man, which means they are mushrikeen kuffar. From such a belief and religion who associate the name of God and the name of a man and knowledge of man and knowledge of God together Not only they associate the name together the knowledge which means Muhammad is God He said it's set in a spring of murky water. This is not the narrator 
understanding. This is the narrator narrating. What a fabricator. <laughs> Continue, Abdul. <laughs> Adding it into the hadith. But please it. do go on. Hmm. Then we could take an alternative and see this. Narrated by Abu Dhar. Once I was with the Prophet in the mosque at sunset time. The Prophet said, O oh, Abu Dhar, do you know where the sun sets? I replied, Allah and his apostle know best. Again, you shouldn't have said that. He said, it goes and prostrates underneath Allah's throne. First of all, yes, this is the correct hadith. It is the hadith. Guys, did he say this is the correct hadith? Did he say yes? Look what he just confirmed to us. I will let him finish. And remember, he said, this, this is the, you know what? There is no need to let him finish let him, because this will make the video long. But look what he said. Yes, this is the correct hadith. So he agreed that this is authentic and this is what his prophet said. Let us go and see this hadith. Hmm. Yes, this is the correct hadith, brother. Yes. Okay. But you just admitted that your prophet is a false prophet and he is an, the idiot of the village. Look what it says. Once I was with the prophet in the mosque at the time of the sunset. What time? So the occasion is what? Is sunset time. All right, let's zoom in so people can see it better. <clears throat> the prophet said, Oh Abu Dhar, do you know where the sun set? So what is the question? This is not as if, this is not maybe, this is not he thought, this is about the sunset time. I replied, Allah and his apostle know best. He said, it goes. And we heard this guy saying, yes, this is correct hadith. So you just admitted that the prophet believed that the sun goes during the sunset. <laughs> but my friend, the sun goes nowhere. It is the earth going around itself. And not only that, it goes and prostrate underneath Allah throne. And we show you where Allah throne is located. It is located in, in the top of the water. <clears throat> Here we go. We will put the hadith again for those who have a short memory. Do you see it? And this is a very Sahih Hadith. What's wrong with those people? They exposed their prophet with no mercy. He said, yes, this is Sahih. Continue, Abdul. Hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari, as we can see, and it clearly conflicts with the verse that speaks of Dhul Qarnayn's perception. The words of the Prophet, peace be upon him, are clear and it is quite obvious that he's speaking of a reality and not a perception. Did you, did you hear? Did you hear? The word, and the suppose this is refute the way Zul Qarnayn he saw it, but this is not the way Zul Qarnayn he saw it. This is how Allah reports in the story. Same time, he refute how? He did not explain to us because he cannot. Because the second he go and he try to explain, he will get his prophet busted. This is why he don't want to read it. You just admitted that this is correct and you are saying that this hadith refute the other hadith and you said that Zul Qurnayn he saw that as if the sun set in the murky water but look what your prophet saying he's saying it goes he did not say as if it goes and the sun goes every day and prostrate itself under the throne of Allah and this is what Muhammad continue Muhammad he cannot keep his mouth shut like the Muhammad and today he says and Allah and that is Allah's statement the Sun runs into a fixed course for a term a decree <clears throat> so when the Quran says in chapter 36 verse number 38 the Sun run in its its course uh, uh, the, the, the Muhammad uh, making it clear that this is about the Sun going every day during the sunset and prostrate itself under the throne of Allah. And actually, you know what? If we go to chapter 36 and read verse number 38 and the explanation, you know, let us do that just for fun, you know, just to show you how, how they shoot themselves in the foot without knowing. All right. I will open Ibn Kathir. Give me a second. So we can laugh together. This is Ibn Kathir. This is a Muslim website. Everybody knows. Not nothing, nothing to do with me. And this is the hadith about your prophet saying exactly what you said. Oh, Abu Dhar, do you know where the sun set? He said, Allah and His messengers know best. He said, 
it goes and prostrate beneath the throne and then he says and that what Allah says the Sun runs in the specific course of uh, for a term that is a degree of the Almighty all-knowing okay explanation now when you know when we when we try to understand something and we ask the Muslim to explain they say to us this guy he misunderstood and this guy who misunderstood and this guy who misunderstood look like Islam is misunderstood by Muslims not by us and look what the Quran is saying here in this verse according to the Quran that the Sun and the day and the night each one of them swim they swim if we go in the Quran, let me show you the verse. Give me a second. It says here. <clears throat> chapter 21, verse number 33, chapter 36, verse number 40. Both of them say is that the day and the night and the sun and the moon they swim the Muslim translation try to make it look different so look at this and he it is who has created the night and the day and the Sun and the moon each is a floating in an orbit some translation as it says that uh, they say it mean the Sun and the moon he don't mean the day and the night but if we go to Ibn Kathir, which is open already, this is why I'm taking advantage of having this uh, open now already, we will see Ibn Kathir, he make it clear. Read carefully with me and laugh. They float in each air orbit, each one of them in orbit. Meaning, what, what does a float? Is it only the sun, the, the, the sun and the moon? No. Mean, the night, the day, the sun and the moon. And this is absolutely false. This is the Quran speaking. وَكُلٌّ فِي فَلَكٍ يَسْبَحُونَ each one of them he is swimming in an orbit so the day is an object the Sun is an object the night is an object and the moon is an object and each one of them he swim and when your prophet you say the Sun goes he just approved that Muhammad he believed that the sunset is the movement of the Sun not the earth moving around itself and he himself in the video he says he agree with that and he says this is the correct hadith fantastical my friend fantastical you earned Nobel Prize of exposing the Prophet of Allah who speak about the foot magnificent foot the beautiful foot of Allah continue my friend let's love more Vaughn get it through your skull that the Prophet peace be upon him refutes your understanding of the verse exactly he refute our understanding to the verse this is why the Sun goes every day and ask Allah for permission to rise again let me show you the original hadith, the bigger hadith. Hold on. This is about the the, 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 the sun rise from between the two horns of shaitan. But let me show you here more hadith. Here we go. In this hadith here, we need to notice something. Muhammad is claiming that the, this is about everyday movement, the sun going between the east, the east and the west. And it goes and prostrate itself. And this guy in the video, he says, yes, this is the correct hadith. And supposedly this is the hadith which is refuting Razwan. By the way, you are not refuting Razwan. Suppose you are refuting me. We know. We know. I entered the mosque, etc. and says here, do you know where, where it goes? What goes what the Sun he said Allah and his apostle knows best because Muhammad is the God of Islam verily it goes and begs permission to prostrate to Allah and the permission granted all right and then it would it would say return to the place where you came from so according to your prophet the Sun is going to a place and then the Sun goes back and asks for permission every day every night after she goes deep into the, the muddy water and asks for permission to leave and this is here another hadith from Sahih al Bukhari. He make it even more clear that the sun every day goes and prostrate. He said it goes, I eat travel. I eat the travel. And he agreed that this is a correct hadith and this hadith will refute him. He just approved that the sun goes every day, travel, i.e., 
which is absolutely false, which means he agreed and he admitted that he's a prophet, is a scam, he's a fraud, and he is lying, claiming that God taught him this, when in fact this is nothing but fiction, the sun goes nowhere, the sun is st staying in its, its place, and we do not need to go and walk anywhere to find the sun sitting. Now we go back to the verse, because until now we did not talk about the verse, which is very funny. If we go in the, in the, in the verse, you will find many stories here, because I want to finish this, otherwise it's going to take forever. It says here, the one is talking first is Allah. They asked Muhammad about Zulqarnain. The Jews always get him busted. And he, Muhammad, he thought Zulqarnain is a prophet of God. When the fact this is a bisexual, his name is Alexander the Great. He says, I will recite to you. Who is talking Allah? I will recite something about his story. So Zulqarnain, he did not say anything. This is him, Allah, reciting the whole story. And then he says, we gave him, established for him. So the, uh, everything he was giving, given from Allah, including victory. And so he follow away. He follow away. There's a road. This is a physical road, not uh, he's a dream in, uh, you know, in his dream. Until, so here is reporting a timing. And then, until what? Until he reached the sitting place of the sun. This is alone explained that Muhammad is a fraud because the sitting place of the sun, in order to say, until he reached the sitting place of the sun, that's mean there is a place where the sun set. If you want to say to me, this is how Zul Qurnayn, he thought that's a big fat lie because the one is reporting the story is Allah. <laughs> and, you know, we confirm that by the hadith of Muhammad, he is saying it goes. The prophet of Islam, he says the sun, it goes. Even the hadith you agree with, it says you agree and you say this is a correct hadith. The sun, it goes. So he found it. He found it. This is reporting a find, not he thought. Are you telling me that Allah don't speak good Arabic? He did not say he thought the sun sitting in a spring of water. He said he found it. Who is the one reporting the finding? Allah. And then he used the same word again. He says, and he found near it. Near what? Near where the sun set. Near where the sun set with a spring of murky water. Not an ocean. And then... If we continue the story, actually, we are talking only about one verse because you will find the story goes in the other direction. Then after he changed his way, then he followed another, another way. Then until when he come to the rising place of the sun. Is it as is? As if is? Or he found he came to the sun rising place. Where is the sun rising place? And he found it. Right, He found it again. Rising on people. <laughs> and then here the story, the fiction, stupid story, continue, that he found people who they are next to it and they ask him to build a dam. And to build a dam between them and people, they are called Gog and Magog. And those Gog and Magog, supposedly they are not a human. And even one of them, his ear is like a tent. And each one of them, he have six until he have 1,000 baby before he die. So the ratio of a human being to, to, to Gog and Magog people is one to 1,000. So if we are 7 billion, Gog and Magog now, there will be 7 trillions at least. Where are they? And suppose the Zulqarnayn, he put them behind the dam so they will not go through. And there's many hadith and many stories about this. Later we can continue and we can laugh at this. So my friend, I want to say thank you for Muhammad Hijab who made this video. It's a priceless, it's a comedy, and it's helped us to expose Islam, especially with the sun set in the murky water and the wall is trying to kill itself, making fun of Allah's words and how the statement in the Quran is silly and stupid. Thank you. Share the video, download it with your friends. And this is a Christian prince who was with you. You can read my books from Amazon.com if you like to learn more. Christ is Lord and Islam is made by a dummy for the dummies. And we prove it every day. Take care.